Hey, hey, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Baha Sham, Yahweh Shai, Baha Sham, Rakaha Kwadash. Double honors to those who rule well. Healthy Shalom to you, brothers, that are out there doing this work in truth and sincerity. Also, you know, a healthy Shalom to you, Akwaf, that's sitting back and listening to the scriptures and obeying your husbands patiently as we wait upon. Our big brother, Yahweh Shai, that's going to be dispatched by the Father and the Holy One of Israel, Yahweh. All right, it's the brother Gabar Adama. Today, I got with me, who I got with me? Little Sarad, right? Mm -hmm. All right, say Shalom, brother. Shalom. Shalom, all right. You know, we hey, we just chilling on the, on the porch, man, you know, after a long day yesterday. And that's what this lesson really is going into, is <laughs> our experiences yesterday. Okay, and I'll give you a, a bit of a background on it. All right, so uh, you know, me and my family were you know were hi basically hired to uh, to help out with a wedding, right? You know, and, and we understand what what a wedding is. We understand what marriage is. We all get that through the scriptures. You know, it's it's you know penetrating your woman. You know, and she's a virgin, and that makes you both twang and makes you one. All right. That basically marriage is sex. And that's what it is. And it's all throughout the scriptures. You know, look it up. You, you, you know, look up. Uh, you know, I'm just going to say it because it's the truth is where 100 percent truth comes from is the brothers at Great Millstone. You know, type in uh, GMS and marriage and you'll see it. All right. I'm, I'm just saying it like that. But it's an experience that we had yesterday. Now, the scriptures also said use this world, but don't abuse it. So, you know, we uh, we were hired. To take care of uh, certain things at a wedding and that's what we did you know we, we got to get our skrilla <laughs> down south yeah that means money you know we got to get our money so we'll use this world not abuse it but there's a lot of different things that we saw yesterday and notice yesterday and we're gonna filter it all through the scriptures these edomites live absolutely deliciously do they not sarah uh-huh they, they don't know you nod your head you gotta say yes or no right all right. So he's nodding his head. He ain't said yes or no, but he's nodding his head. They live absolutely deliciously. So let's jump right into the scriptures. And we won't make this too long. Just a quick, you know, epistle through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. The water to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai for even waking us up this morning. Never forget that. Never forget that. Pray always. You know, and that's what a lot of us don't do. You know, I, well, I'm going to speak for myself first. You know, I need to pray more and more and more. All right. And I can honestly say that for, you know, I got two teenagers in the house, you know, and my wife. We all need to pray more, honestly, because it works. All right. And not even that. The scriptures basically commanded us to pray without ceasing. That's that. This is Psalms 73, verse three. For I was envious at the foolish. See that when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Um, Sarah, go to the scripture. Job. And nine of verse twenty four. All right. While I continue reading this. And again, we're not going to make this too. Ain't make it too long, man. Just late in the evening, sitting out on the porch, enjoying, you know, what's left here at Babylon. Right. See that. All right. Verse four. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. There's no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. Right. Go ahead and read that. Job 9 of verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judge thereof. If not, where and who is he? Right. And we all know that the wicked is Esau Edom, right? The so-called white man. We all know that. And you saw you saw a lot of that yesterday. The pride of them, you know, uh, how they, they have great substance. Yeah, but the scripture said, like, like Sarah just read, the earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. So they have more than heart could wish. We're getting ready to read it. They're also not in trouble as other men, you know. Verse four again, let's read it. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. Verse 5, they are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. And, you know, a lot of those plagues, some of those plagues and curses, right, are written in Deuteronomy 28th chapter. We, uh, you know, us Israelites, when I say we, I'm talking about Jake's, man. We are cursed. We're still up under these curses. But they're not in trouble as other men. They get away with, well, you know, basically whatever they want. Just like Sarah just read. You know, the earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. So they basically do whatever the hell they want to do. And they're very, very prideful. That's another thing that we noticed yesterday. Just just pride oozing, pride oozing. The queen of heaven spirits all over them. Their women rule them, right? 
You see, you see how the women treat them? You know, they do, they all this. And let me, let me tell you something else, man. Let me tell you something else. <laughs> uh, it was it was all me and uh, uh, a little Sarad, man. You know, he's a young man. I, you know, you call him little no more. About as big as I am. But it was all we could do to not laugh. When we saw them out there, you know, dancing a jig or whatever, you know, when they was out there dancing, eating Mike's dancing, man, woo, that's a sight to see, you know. Hey, we got it. We we had we had to even suffer that. It was awful. No rhythm, no nothing. That's you know, the spirit does bear witness. I just gotta be honest. <laughs> oh my goodness, boy, it was something to watch. Let's let's read. Uh, let's see. Uh, verse five again. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. Their pride can pass at them about as a chain and violence cover them as a garment. So no matter what, man, you know, the scriptures go into it and tell you. And it says this very plainly that an enemy speaks sweetly with his lips. Right. But but uh, behind your back, he was drawing swords. He was looking to, uh, to put you in a cage. Matter of fact, let's go. Let's get that scripture. OK, so lock you. Just give me a moment. You see. All right. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. And that's contained in Psalms 55 and verse 21. Grab that for me, Sarah. I'll have you read that and we'll continue on. Because uh, <laughs> I got Sarah with me and uh, he's going to tell you a quick story. And, he, you know, what he noticed firsthand, how these Edomites act, man. These men, they have way more than heart could wish. They are not in trouble as other men. But you know what? They didn't consider the latter end. And we all know in, in, uh, in pursuant to Psalm 49 chapter that their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. And all that pride, man, it's oozing off of them. But how about some y'all? Sure, I got something else for him. Hey, go ahead and read that, Sarah. He got something else for him, for real. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, uh -huh. but war was his heart. His words were softer than oil. But what was in his heart? War. War was in his heart, right? Yet were they drawn swords. Right. Read it again one more time. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. Mm -hmm. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Yeah, they were drawn swords behind your back. You know, and the scripture also told you. And, that, and that's what Esau Edom does, man. You know, he'll try to tell you this and try to tell you that. Basically, what he has done with this Christianity is, is exactly what Sarah just read right there. His, the words of his mouth are smooth and love your neighbor, this and that, blah, 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 in the name of Jesus and all that. But behind your back, what was he doing? Drawing swords. He was he was looking to uh, decapitate you. You see, you understand? And you saw that pride. You saw that yesterday and, and how they, you know, look down on Jake and all that, man. All right. So Rod, he saw it and I'm glad he did. Revelation 18 of verse 7. How much she glorified herself and lived deliciously, right? Lived deliciously. Sarah, uh, tell the people, you know, whoever's listening about the vehicles, all right? There's like Hellcats and like Lexuses. What was it? Hellcats and Lexuses and, and what? And Teslas. Teslas. Uh, uh, Range Rovers, right? Um, let's see. Uh, Range Rovers, what else? It, uh, Cadillac. Oh, no one of Cadillacs. The uh, big ass, like brand new, uh, like eighty, ninety thousand dollar trucks. You know, riding, riding on 26s. <laughs> yeah, for real, though. Just brand new. Uh, uh, and it's just a husband and wife. See, a lot of these uh, rednecks, these Edomites, man, they be, you know, they'll be having like, again, like, believe it or not, these trucks are like $100,000 for real. OK, they be having like $100,000 trucks just for for fun. You know, they don't use it for work or nothing like that. All right. So, again, as the scripture said, they live deliciously. Let's read it one more time. How much she has glorified herself. She's talking about uh, America, a.k.a. Babylon. She has glorified herself. I'm proud to be in America. Nobody can come up against us. We're the best. No, you ain't. You get ready to go down in flames. This place is getting ready to burn soon. Come how much she glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she said in her heart, I will sit as a queen, and I am no widow, and I shall see no sorrow. All right? And, and the reason why I'm reading these scriptures, Sarad, simply because I want you to understand this. The pride and all that on them, they, they don't think that they're going to see any sorrow. You, you, could, you could tell it, right? They don't, they don't think that they're ever going to be, you know, uh, up under the Israelites' foot, which is you so-called blacks, Latinos, Native Americans. They don't, they, they don't think that. You know? Matter of fact, while I'm at it, I'm going to skip on down and I'm going to get that scripture. Here it is. Um, 
let's start right here. Psalm, uh, no, Salakia. Here we go. Psalms 49, verse 11, because I just spoke it up and let's read it. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling place is that big ass house over there, right? Big is a 7,000 foot square, uh, a square foot house. You know, all the nice cars, the uh, 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 fountains and ponds and, you know, uh, you know, gold. You know, you know how they do it. All right. You know, and another thing I noticed is too, these Edomites, man, what they what they have done through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai on the left hand side is is destroy the, what the so called the, destroy the Israelite family, right? They destroy the Israelite family, okay? But see, when they get together, they have all their peoples together and all that, and there ain't no ain't no in, uh, in fighting, ain't ain't no uh, jealousy and all that. You know why? Because Yahweh Bashem Yahushai has put these curses upon us. All right. And the scripture said, what are they going to do? They're going to pursue us and overtake us until thou be destroyed. OK, that's why we got to turn back and listen to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the prophets that are making their bodies a living sacrifice out there on the highways and hedges for your sake, man. Let's read it again. Psalms 49, verse 11. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations that call their lands after their own names. Americo Vespucci, Leo Scipio Africanus, uh, 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 well, New York, uh, like, like this little piece of po podunk, piece of crap town, Boone, North Carolina, it's named after Daniel Boone, right? And, and there ain't no telling what he was doing to get to the Gadites, you know, to the to Northern Kingdom, even Southern Kingdom, okay? You know, as a matter of fact, the uh, so-called black neighborhood that I grew up in up here, up in the mountains in Boone, North Carolina, is called a, a Junaluska. All right. And I looked that up and did the research on it. And he was a chief. It was Chief Junaluska. All right. There's even drown towns. Remember, I showed you that when we was on our way to Chattanooga. Remember that? The drown town? That video I did about the drown town? The uh, Watauga, Watauga Lake? See, that's a drown town, man. It was Gadax there. Okay. It's crazy, man. You know, all these things that they've done, man. And there's a recompense for every damn thing that they've done upon this earth. Let's go here. And I'm going <laughs> to let Sarah tell. <laughs> uh, it's just something that he noticed. And it was, uh, that's why you, you, go, you get ready to see this thumbnail. But it was something that he noticed and it reminded him of the movie. What was that movie called? Get Out. Get, uh, yeah, the movie called Get Out. Right? And it had that dude in, in that movie Get Out. It was basically showing where they was snatching bodies, man. All right? That's that's crazy. First Timothy six and verse 17, because, you know, because when he pointed it out to me, Sarad, when he pointed it out to me, I looked over and it looked just like that one. You, you, I'll let you explain it. First Timothy six and verse 17. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded. See all that pride. Right. I'm, 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 I'm you can't mess with me. I'm white. See, nor trust in uncertain riches. Why does it say uncertain riches? Why? Why does it say uncertain riches? Simply because the dollar bill, it, it, it's, it's backed by nothing. And all, it's, all, all this is circling the drain. Babylon is getting ready to fall. The monetary system, which they are going to destroy on purpose to usher in the mark of the beast, man. See it? They're going to destroy it on purpose. The CBDCs, the, the run on the banks, when the power goes out. What do you, I mean, you know, all that, man. All roads lead to the MOTB. Let's keep going. Nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living power who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. OK, uh, who's that us? That's the Israelites. All things to enjoy. And hey, when that new Jerusalem come down, it's through. Matter of fact, here, grab that. And tell the story, you know, about put, put it up right so it don't mess up. All right. Tell the story. <laughs> About when they were all, you know, all the... Uh, when they were going down to, like, the seats to, like, go to the wedding, it looked like the silent auction it, it, from the movie right. where they were selling the main character. Right. Say it again. It loved that, that, that silent auction, right? Mm -hmm. All right. And what spurred that on was what? When you saw that one dude, uh, that, uh, I, don't, I forget like, which car he came out of, and it, he looked like one of the characters. Which what character was it? The dad. The, which, uh, oh, yeah, the dad. The, the guy that came out of the truck. Yeah, the, right, the surgeon. Yeah, so he looked like the surgeon. And let me tell you what, look. I okay, so Lockie, I don't know what happened. Something something weird just happened. Let's get on back down here. Look at all these scriptures. That's what it's supposed to look like. Damn, bunch of scriptures. Okay, so what Sir Rod was just talking about is in that movie Get Out, man. All right, and, and by the way, if you didn't know, Sir Rod, you didn't know or anybody else that's listening, 
that uh, that dude that uh, played the main character, he that dude was a Hamite. Did you know that? Yeah, he was a Hamite. Okay, so so Rod was going into and it, <laughs> it was it was hilarious because when he said it, I looked over when they were you know all the people were gathered to the ceremony whatever. It looked just like that that auction. All right, it looked just like that auction, and I got to thinking about it, man. And you know, yeah, how about Simeon Shah put it, put the, you know, put it on my spirit to think about certain things. I'm not even gonna say what I was really thinking about. You know, the scripture said, I, I put it this way. <laughs> you already understand when I say this. The scripture said, "Thy heart shall meditate terror day and night." We all that we we know that's coming. You know that that type of uh, spirit jumped on me, man. And you know, just watching and all the pride and all that. We can read that in Obadiah, by the way. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 6. Rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in, rejoice if in the truth. In the truth, not in iniquity, not in uncertain riches, your, your, your cars and your vehicles, okay? You're living deliciously, thinking that you you got it all, you know? And, and it's the look on their faces. They're so happy but oblivious to what's getting ready to happen to them, all right? Why? Because of their iniquities. You, you, you can never forget. Everybody's reincarnated, man. They all back. You see, we're all, we're all back in our lot. Every one of us, whether you were prophesying back then or you uh, or you was a, 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 a you know wicked ass ninja or what, whoever, or uh, Edomite or a Moabite, Hamite. Okay. Mm hmm. Let's continue on. Baruch four and verse eighteen. For he that brought. These plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemy. Did you hear that right there? And the scripture tell us that all these plagues are going to come twofold on what? On these Edomites and the rest of these nations. They're all going to get it. You know, like in that movie, Happy Gilmore. You're going to get it, Bobby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're going to get it. They are going to get it. Man, I like doing lessons with my son. It's, it's, it's rather therapeutic, actually. Isaiah 29, verse 5. But... Your enemies, it's the NIV version right here. Let's read it in the NI. NI, NI to the V, Salaki. Let me get me a drink of water. <clears throat> Ooh. All right. That might sound like a bear, not a dog. I don't know what the hell that was. Anyway, but your enemies will become like fine dust. The ruthless hordes like blown chaff suddenly in an instant. What does that explain right there? What does that explain it? Like dust and chaff in an instant. ICBM missiles. They're going to get blown the hell up. You remember that movie uh, 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 Terminator 2? You know how she was screaming and saying, wake up, wake up. But her, uh, her, all her flesh turned to dust. You know, like in, a, uh, in the scripture of Zephaniah 14th chapter. All right. It says as they stand upon their feet. Right. You know, that's one of my favorite scriptures, by the way. OK. Ooh, ooh. Let's read it in the, in the N L to the T. But suddenly your ruthless enemies will be crushed like the finest of dust. Mm -hmm. Your many attackers. What does that say? Your many attackers. Hey, that's <laughs> that's heavy right there. Will be driven away like chaff before the wind suddenly in an instant. OK, so again, you know, like I was telling Sarah yesterday, man. You know, hey, hey, you got to train up a child. You got to get on him, man. They got to do what the hell. Well, what he's up under my roof. He going to do as, uh, as his father says. That's what's up, okay? But anyway, like I was telling him yesterday, um, uh, see, uh, damn, I just lost my thought. Oh, oh yeah, you you got to really truly believe in these scriptures, and and the and the the beginning of of the belief, the beginning of wisdom, and all this is having a healthy fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, okay? And if you don't have that, and if you don't truly believe in the scriptures, he gonna destroy your ass. Wait and see, he'll get you. This is Psalm 6 and verse 10. Let all my enemies be ashamed and sore vexed. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. See, they're going to be ashamed. They're going to see what's... Matter of fact, here, I want you to get this scripture. Go to uh, Wisdom of Solomon, 5th chapter. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5. All right, and I'm going to continue on. I just got a couple more. We won't make this too long. All right. Because they say peace and safety. This is 2nd Ezra 16 and verse 21. Man, it's absolutely beautiful out here today. Call her lawyer. How about Shem Yahushua for waking us up this morning, you know, and giving us enough strength and everything we need throughout the day, our daily bread, just to get us through the water to Yahweh Shem Yahushua. 2nd Ezra 16 verse 21. 
But hold victuals, which is, you know, going into food, shall be so good, cheap upon the earth, that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow up upon the earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. You see that? In great confusion. Sword, weapons, famine, hunger, and great confusion. Great confusion. This, this whole place, all of America is getting ready to be under a, a bunch of confusion, chaos. Okay? And Yahweh Bashim Yahushua is bringing this to pass. Read that. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as afflicted him. Right. The, the, the righteous man. Who, 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 who's the righteous men? The men on the highways and hedges teaching the truth. Right? Standing in the face of them that uh, they in, great, in great boldness. Keep reading. And made no account of his labors. Right. When they see it, they shall be troubled with fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. Hey, read that back. You, you missed a word. What? Terrible fear. See mm -hmm. that? Read it again. Verse 2. When they see it, they shall be in troubled with terrible fear. Yes, sir. And shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. Mm -hmm. So far beyond all that they look for. So far beyond all that they look for. So again, what we witnessed yesterday, man, with all these, you know, hey, 50, 60, $100,000 cars, you know, money, hoes, and clothes, all in the, you know, anyway, all these cars, man, the lavish houses, you know, the, the $2,000 suits, you know, the the, the, the lavishness and, and, and all that, man, you know. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> all these great riches are gonna come to naught, all right, and that's what's up because it's all it's it's, it's gonna be sword and famine and great confusion. Now, even in the midst of Jacob's trouble, it's gonna be something happening all over this earth. Why do you think they building all these bunkers and shit? You see what I'm saying? And you got these you got these dumbass Jakes thinking they going to hop, skip, and jump up in a bunker with Mark Zuckerberg and the them and the one percenters of this earth. Your chicken groovers and your, and your uh, 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 what, who, who call them damn people? The uh, Red Chills, the Rothschilds, and, you know, and, uh, you know, no, you ain't going to be rubbing elbows with them. Okay, they're going to leave your ass out here to dry, man. Even your Kamala Harris's and, your, your, you know, your stars and all that, man, they're going to leave your ass out there to dry, man. First Thessalonians 5, verse 3. For when they shall say, what? Peace and safety. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child. And they shall not escape. See that? They ain't going to get away with it. They ain't no getting away with this. They shall not escape, man. Mm -hmm. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief, right? So if you're watching, as the scripture said, I have set a watchman in Ezekiel uh, 3, in Ezekiel 3, the 17th chapter, it said, I have set thee a watchman. It told you, I have made you a watchman. Stand upon your watch. Keep the charge of your by Shem Yahushua. Pay attention to what's going on, man. You know, uh, uh, Elder Apostle Aramlav earlier today uh, put up a, a, a video talking about think, uh, think like a scholar, man. All right. We, we the true scholars in this truth. All right. Let's read it again. You are the children of the light, not of the not and not of the of the day. Salakia. We are not of the night nor in darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as uh, as do others. But let us watch and be sober. There's that word. Watch. Watch. You got to watch for these things, man. We all up in the news uh, paying attention to the prophecies. Uh, get uh, get uh, 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 Ecclesiasticus uh, 39 and verse one. All right. So lucky. Give me one moment. These prophecies are popping off the pages, man. And it's happening. My phone chimed on that one. Yeah, the book of Sirach. It's in the Apocrypha. Yeah, just go to, uh, just, uh, you know, Ecclesiasticus. Mm -hmm. Ecclesiasticus. What, 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 what? Here, type, type that in again. Salakia. Uh, what verse is it? 39 and verse 1. Ecclesiasticus. There you go. There you go, Sarad. All right, let's read it again, verse 6. <clears throat> Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. But let us watch and be sober. Watch and be sober. Watch for the prophecies that are all contained in this book that we're reading right now, which in fact is our manual. Read that, Sirach. But he that giveth his mind to the law and of the Most High 
and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all ancient and be occupied in prophecies. And be occupied in what? Prophecies. That's right. And be occupied in prophecies. And it said in the meditation, seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. Joshua uh, uh, 1 of verse 8. You got you to gotta read. The scripture said, blessed is he that read it. That's why you got to read it. And if you don't understand how to eye salve or, or, or you don't want this or you don't want that, what you think and what you, what you feel is going to get your ass killed, man. Okay? I read that already. Let's go to the book of Isaiah 47, verse 7. And thou sitteth and thou saith, I shall be a lady forever. Did you hear that? Okay. I don't know where them children are. So they sort of close anyway forever so that thou didst not lay the things to thy heart neither didst thou remember the latter end of it <clears throat> okay so the latter end of it is what is all the kinds of death and bloodshed and the real latter end is what ashes this whole place being completely destroyed and utterly burned with fire <clears throat> okay let's go uh pull, pull up the book of obadiah all right, we'll read just a couple more scriptures. Let's go into this pride, all right, because they're full of pride. And that's another thing we noticed yesterday. Uh, all kinds of pride, all kinds of pride. The hatred, the disrespect, all that, man. Okay, you know, Proverbs 16 and verse 8. Pride goeth before destruction and a haunty spirit before a fall. Before what? Destruction? We, we're just reading about ashes, how they're going to be dust up under our feet and all that. You see, these people are through. So, Rod, they finished, man. All right. You got the book of Obadiah? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read uh, read uh, 1 through 3 and then jump on down to verse 18. The vision of Obadiah that saith the Lord Yahweh concerning Edom will have heard a rumor from the Lord Yahweh, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye and let us rise up against her in, in battle. battle. Right. Mm -hmm. Behold, I have made these small among the heathen heathen the heathen right now now how is that he's, he's made them small among the heathen now you got all these nations you can read jeremiah the 50 chapter the 51st chapter all right no jeremiah the 50th chapter Slakia. okay how is he being made small among the heathen thou are greatly what read read the rest of that are greatly despised greatly despised because these other nations are starting to figure out what these babylonians have done okay but in their heart what in their heart, what does it say? That they, their houses shall continue forever. I shall sit as a, a, a queen forever. I, I will not see sorrow. No, nah, no. Nah. In one hour, this place is going to get destroyed. Keep on. Let's go. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Pride. Mm -hmm. That thou dwellest in the cleft of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground. That's right. Now jump on down to verse 18. See, see that uh, that pride. Who shall bring me down to? They had a god complex, and you you, you can see it. You gonna hurt yourself, boy. <laughs> Salaki, you gotta train up a child the way he shall go, man. Anyway, uh, you you saw all that pride and all that yesterday, right? You know how they just you know think themselves to be in good case, but the, you know they they're they gonna be pitiful here shortly. Read verse eighteen. We'll close out right. Shall here. I not? Shall I not in that day say that the Lord Yahweh even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding? Out the Mount of Esau. Mm -hmm. Continue. And, and thy mighty men, O Timon, shall be dismayed to the end that everyone is the Mount of Esau may be the cut off by slaughter. Ooh, baby, cut off by what? Slaughter. Baby, cut off by slaughter. And that's that, man. I just wanted to give, you know, a quick account, you know, with my son Sarah, because he was right there and it was funny. What did that woman say? And I said, that's another thing that was getting me, man. The, uh, the, the dancing, man. I mean, <laughs> both of us got a kick out of that, man. They was trying to cut a rug, and they wasn't doing nothing but cutting themselves. But, uh, uh, see, uh, yeah, and the, there's a bunch of older, you know, uh, Edomite women, right? You know, with their, with their men, okay? It was a bunch of them, wasn't it? All right? And uh, just, just watching, you know, how this Babylonian way is, especially with the women, which is supposed to be the weaker vessel. All right. And that's how Yahweh about Shem Yahweh Shah set it up. All right? And there's many scriptures I could go into. All right. That's what Christianity really has done. But their women, man, like just straight up bearing rule over them straight up. You know, just complaining and all kinds of different things. I'll leave it right there. Now, I would explain it just a little bit more. But 
You know, our, that's this is our experience at an Edomite wedding. <laughs> Oh man, and, and again, the only reason why we were there, you know, is, is to make some scratch, man. You know, we got to make some money. It is what it is. All right. Hopefully, this lesson was edifying. A little bit different, but it is what it is. We're out here on the porch, you know, just enjoying our day, giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rakaha Kwadash. Double honors to those who rule well. Healthy Shalom to the brothers that are out there doing the work. In truth and sincerity, man. All right. <laughs> Every chance you get, chant this place down because it's coming soon. It's coming soon. We pray that it happens tomorrow. You see? Kwame Yasharala and Wa Abai Babal. Boom. Shalom.